keeping it a big hint on pretty much everything in this chapter, it says find the sine of 2x. You look at it and go, oh, 2x, that means it's a double angle. Immediately, you are gonna, you're going to use the identity. We're never not going to use an identity here. That's the whole purpose of this. So you're going to go, oh, they want me to find the sine of 2x, and gosh, I bet I need the identity for the sine of 2x. So, which in this case, there is uh, only one. A, yeah, so in this case, it's 2 sine of x, angle x, cosine of angle x. So they actually want me, when they say find, this is evaluate. They want me to get the numbers. This is the exact same thing as the problems you just did on the last assignment. We had to draw the pictures. Yes. So in this case, I need to find the value of sine and cosine. But all they told me was what tangent of x was. But if you know one trig function, you can draw a picture and find all the others. So if ever you're to anything, ACT, whatever, oh. trig functions, and they gave you the value of one, you can always draw a picture and get the others. In this case, I had to tell you what quadrant it's in. Okay, so I'm telling you this angle is at what quadrant? If it's between pi and 3 pi over 2. Yeah. It's third. Oh, yeah, the cold two the clock. Okay, so if it's in the third quadrant, and you know tangent is technically here 2 over 1, that means you know yeah, tangent is y over x, so therefore we know y is 2, x is 1. Thank you. And if you didn't draw the picture, you would miss it. Yeah. Tangents, they would both be negative. Okay, can you get the hypotenuse? Yeah, 1 plus 4 would be... <coughs> so, and since it's r, we know it's positive. So r is square root of 5. Okay, fill it in. You need the sine of this angle in that picture. This is angle x. Sine of y is negative. So I'd be getting y over r and x over r. Don't, on these things, don't rationalize right away. Good things are going to happen here. Sine is going to be negative 2 over square root of 5. Yeah, the r's are going to be the same. Cosine is going to be negative 1 over square root of 5. So that's going to multiply very nicely together. You don't need to rationalize it. I will, I'll buy this. Thank you, 4 fifths. Because you got to realize that's 2 over 1 out there. So 2 times 2 times 1. So that would be 4 fifths, yes. Okay, so these are actually a lot less work than the ones you did yesterday because you only have to draw one picture. You won't have to draw two pictures. You don't have to get an angle. <laughs> so do we think we have to draw the picture of Okay, I will comment. If this had been a cosine of 2x, the one with the three choices, on this kind of problem, it makes no difference which one you pick. If you're going to fill in number values, Pick whichever one you think would be easier to work with. There's really no difference. Are you going to be giving us like really, really hard questions? No. Okay. Just two sides of plus plus. Two sides of plus plus. This? Do we, do we keep these or we have to find these? Well, you will, you will have the identity. You'll have the ide this identity. Okay. So you'll go, oh, I need to find a double angle. I'll just find this one. So no, you don't have to memorize. If you're if you're looking at engineering That's tough. and you're looking at Calc one two three differential equations, you maybe want to commit the double angles to memory because we do use them a lot on up the ladder. Nobody else is on the Okay. I don't like that one much, though. So. I have a better verified. Okay. We're positive. <laughs> okay. Hush up. Okay? You need to read the 
angles, and there's something that we all, y'all don't even want to write the angles, so this is what always gets people. You have to notice the left side has double angles. The right-hand side has single angles. You are never going to get it equal until you get the angles to be the same kind of angle. Okay, so then obviously you want to change the doubles to singles because we have identities that do that for us. Okay. Okay. So, can you tell me an identity to put in either the top or the bottom? Okay. Yeah, maybe it's like two nine, two x minus nine. But how would you know that was the right one? Okay. We don't know which cosine double angle identity to use. Because there's three choices. Now, the bottom, there's only one choice. Yeah. Okay, but the top one, since you don't know which one it's going to turn out to be, go work the other side, start simplifying it, and then it will tell you what one you need over here. So a lot of times you need to work the other side to be able to figure out which cosine double angle identity is right. Okay, so if I work the other side, I'm just going to change them into sines and cosines, normal, using identity 4 and 5. So it become cosine over sine minus sine over cosine, and yes, common denominators are staring at you. Well, you have two fractions subtracted. What else can we do? Cosine squared and sine squared on top. Yes, thank you, Luke. It would indeed, because I would need to multiply this one by cosine, and I would need to multiply this one by sine. And then, does that answer the question as to which identity you should use? Yeah. So that now tells me that, whoa, I have a 2 up here on top. What do I do with this 2 on the left-hand side? I can. I'm going to go ahead. We know I need the cosine squared minus sine squared identity for that double angle. And then, since this is multiplied, yes, it is legal to cancel the two. And, and you're not equal. Well, you can't cancel this two inside the sign with that two. No, you cannot. No. I'm done. I'm equal. It's equal. Holy crap! That's all it took. <laughs> it wasn't. I, because cosine squared minus sine squared is the cosine first cosine double angle identity, when I put it in there, I'm equal. I'm done. I don't have to go farther. Okay. Now, if you had not picked the right cosine double angle identity, you could still get there. If you picked two cosine squared minus one or one minus two sine squared, you could have substituted in identity number six. There's always a way to get there. It's just that there's usually a faster way to get there. Yeah. It'll work the other way. Okay. The other thing I want to tell you about the cosine double angle identities, you'll notice they have a minus one or a one minus. If you have a plus, if you have something in your verifies where there's maybe a plus one in it, choose the cosine identity with the minus one so it'll make them subtract. You want to get the ones to cancel if you can. That will help a lot. So if you're in doubt and you've got ones involved, make the ones cancel. Pick the identity that will make ones cancel out. That will help you too. Okay, we talk half angles. Okay, half angles aren't nearly as commonly used, so I don't get near as excited about half angles. And in the interest of time, I may next time talk to you about how they came to be, but for right now, you get to believe me, because I'm running out of time. To, I'd rather show you examples and prove you this formula. It's just not that important. Okay. So you'll notice, though, they're ugly. They have plus or minus square roots, like gag. That's horrible. So they, the reason they do this, all they did is they took the uh, cosine double angle identity and they solved it for the cosine of single A, because you'll notice single A is half of double A. So they've just taken, all they've done is rearrange the double angle identities to get these. But they're just ugly. Very simple. Okay, so the big thing you all have to worry about is the plus or minus. Well, that's the thing that causes us the most issues, I guess I should say. Because how are you going to know 
where whether yours should be a positive or a negative. It's not going to be both. And so I am just writing these at the moment to get them up so they're up here on the notes. I'm not get, I, I may talk to you about proving a little bit next class where they came from. But the big problem is how do you know whether to use yours to be positive or negative? The plus or minus is determined by the quadrant where the half angle is located. Tasha, turn around and listen. Okay, so it's where the half angle is located. The, if whatever quadrant that is, then you use all star trig class and determine whether it's positive or negative. It's all based on all star trig class, but it's the quadrant where the half angle is at that determines it. And let me give you some true false examples of that. Hold that a second. Is it paused? Okay, well, never mind. I got it. Okay, so suppose I gave you here's true false. Whoops. Maybe if I said, oh, it didn't. It's sticking on me all of a sudden here. If I gave you this problem and I said, is it true or false? You now have to check two things. You have to first go, okay, this is a square root of 1 minus a cosine all over 2. Which of those identities is this? And it's 1 minus cosine. This is the sine half angle identity. So the first thing you have to check is, okay, it's half of what angle? 260. Okay, so it's 260 divided by 2. That's going to be... 130. So, am I right? Yeah, that's not in the right trig function. So, okay, that one's false, for sure. Because you got the wrong trig function. Sine doesn't equal cosine, that's for sure. Okay, what if I gave you, though, um, sine, no, let's not do sine. Suppose I gave you cosine of 250, 50 degrees is equal to the square root of 1 plus the cosine of 500 degrees. Is that true or false? Well, so the square root of a 1 plus cosine over 2 is the cosine half angle. So it'd be half of 500 which looks like it's equal because that would be 250, cosine of 250. But you have to check the plus or minus. You have to check two things. You have to check that they use the formula right, and you also have to check the plus or minus. And it's based on this angle. 250 is in what quadrant? 250 is in the third quadrant. So if you have cosine in the third quadrant, what should this be? It should be negative. Is this negative? No, there's no negative here. We're missing the negative that should be there, so that makes it false because it's missing the negative. Wow, this thing is really so you got to check, did they do the formula part right, and did they get the plus or minus right? <laughs> if you what now? Okay, well, what actually on this test, the true-false is the first thing you do, and I have you write whether it's true or false, and if it's false, I tell you to tell identify what's wrong. So circle what's wrong or tell me what's wrong. So you'd actually miss two points if you missed that one. Negative, so you would have to like show me it should have a negative or how many points is the whole test? The whole test or the whole two balls? Two points. Yeah, you can check each other when you want to be first. Yeah, if you, can, if, you, if you want to check the negative first and go, oh, that's wrong, then you're done, that's fine. I don't care which one you check first. 
I'm probably going to say, throw you some that did both ways. So. Oh, that's usually around 100. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we are reviewing next class. It's okay. Journals are due. Yeah. Okay, other than I'm going to talk to you for like five to ten minutes max on some of product identities, we're not going to do much with them. So if there's a question about those, you're not going to find it on there. Okay. All of the half angle problems are worked the same as the double angle problems. There you're going to get to a section where you have to draw the picture and fill in the value. It's the same type of problem over and over and over. There'll be evaluate, true, false, draw the picture problem. Same thing every time. I will post notes with more examples of half angles. 